You have been acting really weird lately. I'd like to know why. But besides that, it is a gorgeous day out. Not a cloud in sight, and it's also a really special day. I know a friend, or I guess I can call her a friend. I Long story into it, but if she's watching this video, I'd just like to wish her a happy birthday. It's January 24th. Y you know who you are if you're watching this. Bless you. And uh, I just wanted to make another video computer related. My trust, trusty assistant here. Hey, go up here. Oh, okay, you don't do it on video. Come on. Give me kisses. What's up? Yeah, my loyal assistant will help me in the making of this video. Come over here. Come on. It's out of the camera. Isn't she a good cat? She follows me around, actually. You'd be quite surprised. Anyhow, this video is going to be about a tell or somewhat of a Dell Optiplex GX620, the scrapyard king of all my computers. This machine has been used and abused all of its life. Essentially, yeah, I know you want some attention. This machine was practically pretty much gone when I got it. Uh, I acquired six of these machines. I sold pretty much every single one of them and I kept this one because this machine was never in good shape to really sell. And I never committed because I knew if I, if I pretty much gave someone what this someone this machine it either they wouldn't be it, it wouldn't just sell okay it wouldn't sell it was in very poor shape when I got it and it pretty much remained that way it had no RAM no power supply no CPU no nothing it was completely gutted there was nothing inside it besides the, someone kept this cooler and heat sink and whatever so whatever but it is indeed one of these older Dell BTX systems which are awesome for those who do not know how the BTX form factors work believe it or not how these systems let me turn on infrared here so you can see it better how these systems work is they take a large amount of air through the front of the system pass it through this massive cooler which is in this case a really freaking pathetic one and what they do is since it's mounted on the other side and not and usually these motherboards are mounted on this side well they're mounted on this side which means graphics cards such as these have the heatsink facing up and basically the air comes across the heatsink right here and falls to the back. They also, a lot of these machines have south bridges and north bridges that in this case right there, you can't really see it too well and it basically brings the air over that and brings it up the back. It's a very good design, it's very good and okay leave me, that's okay too. And it commonly works really smooth for most mach for these machines. They keep themselves pretty cool. This machine on the other hand does not keep itself very cool. This machine has a really shitty CPU in it. When I got this machine, I pretty much said to myself, okay, it's pretty much trash, but I had nothing else to do, so I'm just going to go build it, rebuild the thing, and see what it does. So I took a, like, this really shoddy AMD power supply. It doesn't even really have a brand name. All it says is it says powered for AMD or something like that. Uh, it says AMD recommended. And it's a good power supply. It's kind of underrated for what it really is, but, um... It's not, well, it's kind of overrated for what it really outputs. It doesn't look like it's made with that kind of quality components, but it, it works to the extent of what I do. It is not the proper power supply connector. As you can see, it does not meet all the connectors here, but that's okay, honestly. The machine seems to work fine without it, so screw it, right? Um, I just opted to put in this really shoddy drive that's not even mounted in. This is just a generic CD drive. Um, I put a, I don't know what kind of a hard drive, I think I put a Western Digital drive in here, not a, I think it was an Enterprise Drive, uh, edition. And I just, I, I didn't have the mounting brackets for the hard drive bay, so I just stuck it in where the floppy drive bay was, and I didn't screw it on here, but I screwed it in the other side. It seems to hold in, so that's fine, being that I don't use floppy drives pretty much anymore, which is surprising. I normally do use floppy drives. The only time I use them floppy disks is for drivers and Word documents. I still use them on for drivers, basically. I have a USB floppy disk drive, and I plug it in, and I'll use it for drivers. And that works just fine for me for when I want to get drivers all stored away. But in this case, this machine is very basic. 
Um, so I basically upgrade. I, this RAM, the computer used to have two gigs of RAM. Here's the other one gig. But something went. Excuse me, I'm burping and hip gupping at the same time. As you can see, something went wrong with the first socket, and it would actually not accept RAM in there. It would do these very weird characters and basically indicating that something is stuck in the socket. And I tried dusting it and everything, and it just doesn't work. So I don't know what's up with that. It never used to do that, but so I've only got a gig of RAM in this machine. I've got an AMD Radeon. God knows what the hell it is. I, I, it's in standby right now, so all I gotta just turn on the power. And we'll find out. This machine also has a pretty danky dank uh, Pentium 4 in it. I mean like a really bad cooling Pentium 4. I've seen some pretty bad like space heater kind of Pentium 4s, but this one is definitely the worst. I don't know what what kind of a exact chip it is. I'm going to look it up right now. But this machine uses a very old, like a very newish kind of press. And I wouldn't say, I don't know, it's kind of in between. But it utilizes a Prescott series. I believe it's Prescott. It utilizes a very bad Prescott series um, CPU chipset type. And uh, it, it is LGA775, by the way. But this machine and gets incredibly hot. The fan will spin up to max. It is ridiculous. The machine and there is thermal paste on it. Before any of you ask me, is there thermal paste on it? Because I've been known not to use thermal paste in machines. Yeah, I've done that before. It's not very nice to the machine, but it still seems to work as long as you've got it cooled right. And um, this machine maybe gets up to 80 degrees Celsius, and then it tries to spin the fan up pretty loud. And the fan in this machine is noticeably loud. Look, that fan has even got a warning not to stick your fingers in it. That's how big that fan is. And it's a very beefy Delta fan, too. It's running at very low RPMs, but even at the low RPMs, you can still feel it bringing air through the front. So I'm going to log in here, and I'm actually going to go ahead and see what kind of a CPU it is using CPU-Z, and I'll get back to you. Just for a very clear note, this is exactly what I mean. 16% CPU usage, and the thing is spinning up like hell. That's just an example. I'm going to get the full specs now. So to be honest with you, I never really thought that this was a Prescott. I was kind of thinking it was meant to be one of the more modern Pentium 4s. I don't know what they were named, but I think they were LGA-771. But it is indeed a Prescott. Ew. As you can see, it uses 90 nanometer technology. Basically saying it's a gigantic freaking... That would explain why it gets so hot. The reason why is because uh, most Pentium 4s back in the day were maybe 120 nanometers. And a thread, which is basically what I'm talking about is the thread between the wiring, between the internals of the CPU. The smaller the thread you get, the higher the clock speed with that, you're honestly in a higher core voltage. In this case, the core voltage is kind of up there for that kind of thread. Which means it basically results in the CPU becoming a massive space heater. Which explains why the fan always tries to throttle itself. To, not throttle, but basically just max itself out. It is a hyper-threaded CPU. I do have hyper-threading enabled. So as you can see, it's a Pentium 4 630. So it's uh, not the best out there. It's definitely a very hot running Pentium 4. There are actually much better Pentium 4s, you might believe. You might be wondering, whoa, what do you mean better Pentium 4s? Aren't Pentium 4 shit? Some of them are not that bad. This is a bad example of a Pentium 4, but there are actually some Pentium 4s that utilize better technology, thicker threads, and possibly run a lot better at uh, higher clock speeds and run better at lower temperatures. This one is just a complete asinite piece of shit, really. It's terrible. This is a very bad Pentium 4. I do have upgrades for this machine. I have a Pentium D I could throw in here if I wanted to. I probably not going to because I don't really care too much about this machine. I mainly only use it to do copies, or not copies, but uh, scan blueprints and just browse the web while I'm waiting for the bus to come. And graphics has an eight, Radeon HD 240, so not a super duper graphics card. Something that is enough. It's got 256 megabytes of RAM. It's not bad. It's not terrible, but it's not bad. For what I'm doing with it, it's definitely not bad. Um... The main board is a Dell BTX system. We already know this, but here's a little bit more in depth on the motherboard if you really wanted to look at it. It even shows the BIOS version. I didn't think CPU-Z was able to do that, but apparently it does. It utilizes a BIOS A Revision A5 from 2005. This BIOS could stand to be updated. That is true. Um, although I'm probably not going to do that because there's really no point to. Anyhow, that's all I wanted to show with this machine. I'm probably just going to put it back into sleep mode because that's pretty much all this machine does is just stay in sleep all the time. 
um, so I can resume to it fast. I could probably shut it down, but whatever. It stays in sleep and it does what it needs to do. And here's what these Dell BTX systems do. They actually stay on for a bit. When they they like do this pre power on cycle, a lot of their older machines do this too, where they stay into a pre standby function where the light flashes really fast and the system cools down a little, does a little bit of functions, then it completely goes into standby and flashes the light a lot slower. Whoa, what was that? Oh, it was this. Anyhow, thanks for watching, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.